James, um, the film Truth, based on uh, Mary's story, I guess. So how closely is it based on, on the actual events? Uh, it's very close. We did a lot of research to try and recreate uh, it exactly as Mary and Dan experienced it. It's uh, originally based on Mary Mapes' book. So, so after uh, after everything happened, she wrote a memoir in 2000, published in 2006, that I optioned, and that was sort of the beginning of it. And then we went around and we interviewed a lot of different people who were involved in the story and 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 put it together that way. Casting uh, Robert Redford in the in the role uh, for Dan Rather must have been an incredible achievement oh, yeah. getting him on board. Yeah, no, it was in incredible. I was I was uh, not for me by the way. Like I didn't do any incredible to make it happen. I'm just, I was amazed it happened. Um, I knew him a little bit. I'd written a screenplay a couple years before that he was going to direct, so I knew I wanted him to play Dan when I wrote the film, but I also knew that that he his first question would be, even if he was interested, who's going to play Mary? So I knew we had to get Mary first. And Kate Blanchett, obviously, I mean, you know, you don't have to think too hard to go, well, you know, she's the actor of her generation, so she'd be pretty good. Um, and, and we got Kate to sign on, which was fantastic. And then I wrote Bob uh, a long letter and and told him how much uh, all the president's men meant to me and and why I thought him doing this film could be really wonderful and and how the two films might echo each other if if, if we end up doing a, a, as good a job as I hope we could and uh, and then he called me at home and said yes which by the way never happens you never get the call from the guy it's always an agent one way or the other but my phone rang on a Thursday and it was a block number and I picked it up and I heard that voice go hey Jamie it's Bob Redford how'd you go about recreating something Someone who's so iconic as Dan Rather and, and bringing something that people will recognize, but obviously having Bob doing that role. Sure, I, was, I actually sort of said that we, when we, after he agreed to do it, we got together and had dinner and we, we talked about approach and I sort of said, listen, correct me if you, if you want to go a different route, I'm absolutely open to it, but my instinct is if you do an impression, it's a trap. Uh, because then people will just be judging you on that as opposed to watching the character. And so I said, I don't want to put you under a bunch of prosthetics. I don't want to do a lot of makeup. Uh, I think we gray your hair, and I think you do a little bit of a vocal intonation to honor that Dan's from Texas and has a very thick Texas accent. And other than that, you know, I said, I, said, I think you just play the character. And... If the rest of us do our jobs, you know, it, the first 90 seconds you're on screen, people will be sort of going, oh, Robert Redford is Dan Rather. And then the movie will kick in and people will go on the ride with it. And, and he was absolutely excited to sort of do it that way. And that's how we approached it. Mm -hmm. it films about journalism vary in, in terms of the, the quality and especially in terms of how they uh, depict modern journalism. Sure. Um, did you learn much about modern journalism from, from working on this movie? I tried to. I mean, I tried to learn sort of as much as possible in terms of what went into it. One of the things that was fascinating to me that I didn't know as, as or, or, or I hadn't thought about, certainly, was just the practicality of it. When you're, when you're working on a weekly news broadcast show, scheduling the story, you know, and as we depict in the movie, and this is absolutely true, uh, they couldn't run it on a certain date because CBS had scheduled a Dr. Phil McGraw special. Uh, and the Billy Graham crusade the week later. Now, as someone who watches news and watches 60 Minutes, I don't think about that as I'm watching it. But for somebody who works in it, that's absolutely a practicality they have to deal with every day. So I love the idea of bringing stuff like that out and showing an audience what it's like behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite moments in the film, and I think the most tense, is when Mary is giving her speaking in front of the panel. Sure. And the question of how much truth did she deliver um, it comes up. And you're not sure for one moment whether you're on her side or not. Yeah. Um, how did you go about recreating that kind of element and hiding a few things from the audience uh, without giving everything away too early? Well, for, for me, you know, just as a filmmaker, I, I, I try and structure the screenplay so that you are emotionally invested all the way through. And so that means you want to hold certain things back and surprise people because otherwise you're just not, you know, it's like, all right, and then they're going to talk. And this. So, so uh, you know, I knew we were going to build to, to the moment in the panel. So the movie kind of gears you towards that. And so that hopefully when you watch the film, it's not just, oh, this is about journalism and here are all these facts and stuff that happened. You're, you're being taken on this emotional journey with these characters and you're really pulled in both directions and you don't necessarily know what's going to happen. And finally, I just want to ask you about the project you're working on at the moment. Which is Independence Day 2, actually. It's the a resurgence. I did some work on that. Right. Um, and uh, wh what stage is that? I mean, all completed? And... So, yeah, they're, they're, it's in the can. So Roland Emmerich uh, 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 returning to the director's chair 20 years later, um, uh, you know, for, for his classic hit. Uh, uh, almost the entire cast is back. And they finish shooting, and it's going to be out next July 4th. And a huge fan of the original. Actually. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I saw it like three times in the theater. So like when Roland asked me to work on it, I was like, yeah, I, I think we can do that. You can't turn that down. Okay? No, absolutely. <laughs> Excellent, man. Looking forward to it. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much, my friend. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey, You Guys. Hey, You Guys, huh? Hey, You Guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Yeah.